truly wows the user, all along ensuring no compromise on the functional features that our fans have always adored. And that is what led us to the Aura Design philosophy. The impact of Aura Design is clear at first glance. The symmetric seamless design draws your attention immediately. In your hand, the new note feels premium and ergonomically designed. Truly a class apart. And that's not all. We've carefully crafted the bezel, the notch, and the overall user experience to ensure that the new note immerses you deeply into every experience that you desire. What really makes a new Redmi Note an excellent device is its functional design. We've ensured that no small accidents, spills, or drops will ever degrade the quality. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Xiaomi launch event. As we are about to begin, we request you to please take your seats and ensure that your mobile phones are on silent. Thank you. Xiaomi. Okay, Google, start my workout playlist. Welcome to all our partners, all our media colleagues, and all our Mi fans who are watching us live right now. Thank you so much for joining us today. So my name is Manu. I lead Xiaomi's business in India. And probably for one of the first few times, I'm actually dressed up very similar to how my picture looks like. Right? So very happy to be here. Uh, we are making a lot of really exciting announcements. And I just want to start by saying that once again, I want to thank all of you guys, and especially our Mi fans, for making us the most loved technology brand here in the country. We have now number one across multiple categories, smartphones, smart TVs, fitness band, and power banks. And you know, a big part of this success also goes to the fact that we have built a great team here in the country. We're a company which is truly committed to the country, and we have built local leadership. If you look at most of our leads or functional heads, they are Indians and people who come from very varied background, especially internet background. Like we have with us Murli, our India CEO, who was the India head of eBay. Raghu, who heads the categories and online sales, he came from Snapdeal, he was a director at Snapdeal. Anuj, who heads the marketing, he joined us from Lenovo and Modo. We have Vikram, I don't, can't see Vikram right now. Vikram who heads a financial services business, and many more leads here in the room. And all of them joined us from a varied internet background. We have 700 employees. We have been building a lot of teams, especially a lot of product and R&D teams. Like this particular team is responsible for building our camera business here in India. So we have a separate dedicated team, which just optimizes our camera, both hardware and software. And a lot of hardware and software optimization has gone in. For example, we introduced a dual pyrolytic sheet only for phones which are designed for India and made in India. Why? Because 
in cities like Delhi, it could be really hot, and this pyrolytic sheet helps reduce temperature by two degrees Celsius. Or the fact that we know Indian conditions can be very humid, so we introduce P2I coating, which makes your phone splash resistant for many of our phones here in India. Plus, we did a lot of customization on chargers, cables, introduced two plus one SIM slot, and many other customizations only for India. And even in software, almost all our apps have been customized for India. For example, Me Calculator, Me Calendar. In Me Calendar, you have Panchang Calendar, which is the Hindi calendar, and you can actually see all the Hindi dates and festivals in your Me Calendar. Or we have Me Music and Me Video, which has been completely redesigned for Indian market with Indian content. Or we have Me Drop, which a lot of people really love, and we have 100 million downloads of Me Drop organically in India. And people really love it because they want to share files, videos, pictures, and they can do it without any data consumption. And we've been contributing, we've been doing a lot here in the country, and also been contributing for the society. For example, this is something that I'm personally very proud of. So when the Pulwama attack happened, we as a company decided that we will contribute about two crore rupees from our side for the family of all the soldiers who were martyred during that attack. And not just us, all our partners, our me preferred partners, our employees, even our me fans, they came together and they contributed another 20 lakh rupees from their side. So we took this entire two crores 20 lakh rupees and gave it to the government of India. And we're trying to ensure that this money reaches all the family members of these soldiers. Every time we do, uh, we, uh, every time during Republic Day or Independence Day, we try and ensure that we do something special for underprivileged kids. Like this is just one of the initiatives that we did uh, some time ago, uh, where we took, we created the world's largest grain mosaic, and we used this grain to feed about five lakh people across the country. And then we have, of course, adopted a lot of lakes uh, in Bangalore or Bangalore, which is our hometown, and we just take a lot of effort in cleaning these lakes, cleaning the environment, cleaning everything around them, and ensuring the whole environment around these lakes become a lot better than what it was earlier. So the theme for us for today is me for you, because we really want to ensure that we are launching products which are for all of you guys are me fans. And we have three big announcements today, and these three announcements are announcements regarding various themes which are designed in India, designed for India, and made in India. So let's start with the first announcement, which is related to the, our, my personal favorite topic, which is Make in India. Now our Make in India journey is almost like four year old. We first announced that we want to start manufacturing phones in India in January 2015. And at that point of time, we thought it will take us two years to launch our first manufacturing plant. And we were pleasantly surprised by just, in just six months, by August 2015, we had started manufacturing in India, along with a partner of Foxconn. And this was the first phone, Redmi 2 Prime, and the first unit that was manufacturing, that was manufactured in India, and we were presenting it to the Honorable Chief Minister, Mr. Naidu. Uh, then last to last year, we had our second manufacturing plant, uh, which was again in Andhra Pradesh, again in partnership with Foxconn. And slowly and gradually, we started building our manufacturing plants here in the country. And we announced last year that we had six manufacturing plants across three different campuses in uh, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and Noida. And I'm happy to share that we are announcing a new manufacturing plant today. So yes, uh, we have a seventh manufacturing plant coming up here in the country. Okay. Thank you. Um, and this manufacturing plant is in partnership with Flex, and I have Flex team, including Flex India Head with us. So, yeah. so this will be a plant of over about a million square feet. Now, when we signed this partnership, Murli, who is our India CEO, visited this plant, and this plant is not only for phone assembly or manufacturing, but this is also for SMT, which is PCB manufacturing. And he was really impressed to see the latest tech, latest uh, systems and processes available in this manufacturing plant. One of the things which really impressed us was that at every step, 
there's a detailed QC which happens, whether it is during SMT, whether it is during phone assembly or manufacturing, or even during assembly, during packaging process. At every stage, there are multiple checks which are done to ensure that our quality is probably the highest in the country. So we have these seven manufacturing plants across four different campuses. So Flex is setting up a manufacturing plant near Chennai in Tamil Nadu. Foxconn has manufacturing plants across Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. And of course, we also manufacture phones along with a partner, HiPad, who have a manufacturing plant in Noida, UP. Now, just to share a few numbers about all these manufacturing plants, last year when we met, uh, we announced that we have about 10,000 people working across all these manufacturing plants in India. And happy to share that we've been ramping up the capacity and we've been hiring more and more number of people. So if we include all these manufacturing plants, today we would have about 20,000 people working across all these manufacturing plants. And what makes me really proud is the fact that we have worked very hard for women empowerment and almost all our employees, more than 95% of them are women. Now, one question that all many of our media colleagues ask us is what is the capacity of these manufacturing plants? <laughs> and we have said that every time we will cross a big milestone is when we will share it. Last year, we said our manufacturing capacity was two phones every single second during the operational hours of our factory. And because we have been ramping up our capacity and because we have a new manufacturing plant coming up, with this <coughs> manufacturing plant, our capacity will go to three phones being manufactured every single second. Thank you. Not just this, almost all our phones, more than 95% of our phones are made in India. <coughs> and the reason why we say 95% is because we do keep importing some phones from time to time, whenever there's a big sale event. And with this new manufacturing plant going live, our aim is that we should try and minimize even this 5% going forward. So from now onwards, we are really hopeful that we will have more than 99% of our phones that we'll sell in India, will be locally manufactured here in the country. And not just smartphones, we're also focusing on many more categories, which are which we really want to produce locally here. For example, TVs and power banks. TVs, we just launched a factory along with a partner, Dixon, to start manufacturing. And power banks, we just started working with another partner, Navitasis, who has started manufacturing our power banks here in the country. So this was the launch of our TV factory, Sorry, this clicker is not working. Yeah, it's not it's working now. <laughs> so uh, this is the launch of our TV uh, factory um, in uh, Andhra Pradesh along with Honorable Chief Minister Mr. Naidu. And we have been really, we want to take this Make in India to a very different level. So last year we announced that not only phones, but we also manufacturing PCBs in the country. And which is a pretty big thing because PCBs contribute to almost 50% of the value of the phone. And not just PCBs, slowly and gradually we've been building a lot more components. Like now we have started manufacturing battery and battery packs, we've started manufacturing cables, chargers, and many more components here in the country. Now the question comes is, how much value of the phone is locally sourced or manufactured here in India? PCB is almost 50%, and then we have cable, chargers, battery, and few more components which we've started local resourcing. So if you add all of this, almost 65% of the value of the phone that we sell in India is being locally sourced here in the country. So with this, let me just quickly summarize the first announcement that we are making, which is around Make in India. So we have six, seven manufacturing plants now in India across four different campuses, one by Flex uh, in Tamil Nadu, two by Foxconn, one in Tamil Nadu, one in Andhra Pradesh, and one with HiPad, which is in Noida. We employ about 20,000 people. Almost all of them, more than 95% of them, are women. We can produce three phones per second, which means almost 100% or more than 99% of the phones that we'll sell in India will be made locally here in the country. And what makes me really proud is the fact that more than 65% of the components, value of the phone, is being locally sourced here in the country. 
So that was the first thing, guys. Uh, for the second announcement, I would like to call on stage the man himself, Murli, who is our India CEO. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. A very good afternoon to all our esteemed guests, partners, and members from the media, and all our me fans and others uh, watching on the live stream. My name is Murli Krishnan, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Xiaomi in India. Xiaomi, as some of you may know, is, is actually more than a smartphone company. Through our very unique triathlon business model, we have firstly a hardware business, of which, of course, smartphones is the majority chunk, but we also have TVs, IoT products, and a whole host of other products in our ecosystem categories, which we very efficiently take to market using our new retail approach, which is both online and offline. And we call this new retail because we take all the efficiencies that we observe in e-commerce and apply that to the offline trade and take our products directly to the customer in many cases. That is new retail for us. But what makes us truly interesting as a company is leveraging the power of the internet and delivering internet services to our consumers using all of these devices. And to double click on that and understand that, that a little bit more, our internet services business can broadly be divided into four different pillars. Number one, MIUI, which is the custom layer on Android, which serves as the basic experience for our smartphones wherein we have focused purely on the consumer experience and added a whole lot of bells and whistles that make a consumer's life a lot more easier, a lot more simpler. And mind you, a lot of these are not found in the typical Android operating system. Then we have the highly secure Mi Cloud services where our consumers who use our phones can store their documents, pictures, videos, music, pretty much any kind of file on the cloud in a highly secure environment and access that anytime, anywhere, through any device or pretty much share it with anyone that they would so choose. And then you have entertainment in our internet services business, which in India is me video and me music on our smartphones and most importantly, the patch wall UI on our smart LED televisions where our consumers have access to over 700,000 hours of content most of which which is, uh, which is free. And finally, we have finance and financial services on which I'd like to double click here for a minute. But before I talk about financial services overall, it is important to call out the contribution that UPI has made overall in the digital payments landscape in India. Conceived and launched in 2016 as one of the most important and successful initiatives under digital, digital India, UPI effectively has transformed the way Indians pay digitally, Indians send and, money, uh, send and receive money digitally on their smartphones. In effect, I think it'll be fair for me to say UPI has democrat, democratized the way we make payments in India. It's seen a clear hockey stick growth and with a clearly an analyzed payment value of close to $200 billion as we speak and growing further. In fact, there's been a survey by BCG and Google which project that by the end of 2020, over half of internet users will actually be users of digital payments and this market would grow to be as large as $500 billion. Now, when you take a market opportunity as large as this and layer on it, the tens of millions of users that use Xiaomi phones on a daily basis, some very, very interesting opportunities come up. And it is my privilege to talk about one such opportunity that we are bringing to the market today, which is MePay, India's payment solution from Xiaomi, the easy way to pay. Thank you. Thank you. MePay is a solution that we have pretty much conceived and des uh, designed in India keeping in mind the typical, in, typical Indian payment use cases. In fact, this is the first time that Xiaomi has launched a payment service anywhere else in the world outside of China. MePay is built on the UPI platform, which brings it access to over 120 banks. And there are three fundamental factors that I want to call out about the MePay solution. One, how simple is it? Two, how convenient is it? 
And three, how secure is it? Let's talk about simple first. The first thing that strikes you about the entire MePay app is the clean, neat, clutter-free interface that you see um, on the app. And we've spoken to a lot of our users, we've spoken to our me fans, we've spoken to people who use digital payments, and they keep telling us, look, I have two, three very common use cases. I need to send money, I need to request money, and once in a while I need to make a bill payment, and I have, uh, let's say, to scan a QR code to pay offline. So we took that really, really clearly and seriously and said, let's design an interface that keeps clutter away. If you want to make a money transfer, it needs to be accessible at a single click. No more navigating through multiple menus and sub-menus. No more going into multiple sub-pages to do a simple functionality. So that's one big call out on the design approach, on the UI design and UX design approach of the MePay app. Our users also told us that while you do money transfers, a whole, bunch, a whole bulk of those transfers are actually peer-to-peer -peer transfers. So we said, look, we have to figure out a way to make that really easy and convenient for our users. So let's see how the entire peer-to-peer -peer money transfer functionality works on MePay. So I launch the app, I click on the transfer button, and in this, in this case, actually, Manu and I had gone for dinner last night, and we had to split the bill. So here I am doing that. Um, I choose send to UPI ID. I enter Manu's um, UPI ID, and we had Rajma Chawal, so we're splitting like 50 bucks for the entire bill. And I enter my super secure UPI pin, and boom, I'm done. The money gets instantaneously transferred on UPI to Manu's bank account. Now that was a transfer money on UPI use case. But a lot of users have also told us that, uh, you know what, my my mother, my father, my uncle, etc. perhaps don't know UPI, they haven't yet adopted a UPI ID. Is it possible to transfer through bank account? Of course, the UPI platform offers that too, and that's clean and neatly integrated with MePay. Let's look at how the easy peer-to-peer -peer transfer option works using the money transfer, uh, money transfer to a bank account option. So again, I click on transfer. This time, I'll choose send to bank account. No confusion, very clearly laid out there. Enter the bank account details of the recipient, including the IFSC code, the amount, and finally the super secure UPI PIN, and the money is instantaneously transferred to the recipient's bank account. Well, that was a send money use case. You can also request money whenever you need to. So request, enter the intended sender's uh, UPI details, the amount, and we're done. A notification goes to the um, intended user's UPI app, and it could be pretty much any UPI app because we're leveraging the power of the UPI platform. And once the, uh, the, the other person makes that payment, I get a notification and the money is instantaneously credited to my bank account. And we've also realized that there are a whole lot of offline payment use cases. Uh, you, you keep seeing QR codes being available in a whole lot of offline stores where people prefer to receive digital payments, especially for lower ticket transactions. There's a very easy access to scanning and paying. All I do is click on that, scan the QR code, and the entire payment is made. So the three key use cases that we have for digital payments, which is sending money, requesting money, scanning and paying, all very easily, cleanly, and neatly, effectively in a very simple use case, integrated into the MePay app. That was how we made it simple. Now let's talk about how we make it convenient, and here's where this entire story becomes really interesting. The most interesting thing about MIUI is, is the way it's deeply integrated, uh, the most interesting thing about MePay is the way it's deeply integrated into the MIUI experience. In fact, taking a step back, the way we think about this is that there are three large meta use cases for the usage of a smartphone and the internet. One, you have content. Two, you have communication. And three, you have commerce. Now, when it comes to content, you probably have the browser, you have the uh, video player, you have the gallery, etc. Now, all of these are core apps of the operating system. Similarly, when it comes to communication, you have messaging, which is a core functionality. Now, that's a core app of the operating system. It's exactly with the same philosophy that we think of payments. We think 
payments are a core mobile operating system use case, and hence, payments as a functionality needs to be deeply integrated into all key touch points in your entire smartphone experience. The fact that payments is a separate app which is installed separately is a notion that over a period of time can evolve and change if you take it, if you take the view that it's a core app and integrate it smartly into various aspects of the smartphone, the smartphone's functionality. Let me explain how we have done that. For us, MePay is not just a standalone app. When we, think of it, when, when we think of it as a core operating system functionality, we've taken digital payments and integrated that into various parts of the experience where it's relevant. For example, in the SMS messaging app, there is a send money, a transfer money option. I can click that and make an instantaneous transfer to the person that I'm chatting with without going to my payments app. Similarly, from the contacts app, I click on the send money option and I can send straight from the contacts app without having to open my payment app separately. Similarly, from the app vault, which is something that you can access by swiping to the right from your home screen. And of course, the camera and scanner app. MePay and its functionality is deeply intertwined with various relevant points, various relevant touch points of the entire MeUI experience. Let's take a look at how some of these use cases flow. Let me take the transfer money in SMS use case. And in the scenario, let's say um, I've got my first salary, and I'd like to transfer some of that to my mother. And let's see how that goes. I'm messaging, I'm chatting with my mom, I choose send money, I choose her bank account information, I've entered the amount, followed by the PIN, and that's it. I did not have to launch a separate payments app, I'm in my messaging app, I'm chatting with my mother, I had to send her some money, I could do it right within the app without having to launch another app. Let me take another very interesting use case here. Transfer money using the contacts application. And here, let's talk about a scenario where I have to transfer rent to my landlord. What do I do? I go to the contacts app, choose my landlord in the entire contacts option, click on the send money link out there, UPI ID of my landlord, which in this case is Anuj. Enter the amount, enter the UPI pin, boom. The money is transferred to my landlord. I've been very much in my contacts app. I did not have to go launch a different payment app and the entire transaction has been completed seamlessly in just one single flow. That's pretty much how we are thinking of integrating MePay and its functionality into various critical aspects of the MeUI experience. But we also realize that it's not just sending and receiving money which are large uh, digital payments use cases. A lot of people also use uh, digital payments to recharge their phones, to recharge their DTH accounts, and to make various utility bill payments. Could be for, uh, for their gas connection, for electricity, for power and so on and so forth. All of that, all the relevant ones, all the relevant ones are already integrated into the MePay service because it rides on Bharat's bill pays infrastructure, which supports over 120 billers as well as recharge partners. And that's not all. MePay as a payment solution is also available on me.com and the Me Store app, wherein in this case, if I have to buy a Me A2, I just click on the buy now button place order, go to my checkout options, choose UPI, and MePay clearly is available out there, and I continue checking out. The beauty of this is because it's so tightly integrated with the MeUI experience, if you have a Me account, then you don't have to register separately for MePay. You're already register, registered, you just need to activate it by signing into the MePay app. There is no question of following a separate process, et cetera, et cetera, to register for your payment solution because of the integration that we have done with the overall MeUI experience. And finally, and most importantly, I know a lot of you are, are curious to know how do we keep this secure, what happens to data localization and so on and so forth. Extremely proud to tell you that the solution has been approved by NPCI and we have followed all the high standards of audit and certification that have been stated here. Uh, the solution is 
uh, audited and certified by ENY as well as Lucidius. ENY, both of them put together, have audited us for vulnerability assessment and penetration testing, as well as the system audit report, with which all data localization has also been looked into. At this moment of time, um, I should take a minute in calling out the fact that for MePay, all user data is stored locally in India in secure servers. We are compliant with the data localization requirements from day one. I'd also, at this point of time, uh, like to express my thanks and gratitude to NPCI, specifically Ms. Praveena Rai for uh, joining us here. Uh, they've been great support, and uh, with their support, as well as with the support of our payment service provider, ICICI Bank, which is one of India's foremost banks, we wish to take MePay and this entire payment solution for our users to even greater heights. To summarize, MePay is India's payment solution from, from Xiaomi, makes it a very, very easy way to pay, is simple, is convenient, and is secure. Based on UPI, it's rolling out as we speak to all MIUI users, and we wish and we hope to complete that rollout over the course of the next uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks. Just take a moment to, to play out a video for all of you on MePay. This is the new MePay app, a one-stop solution to all your payment needs. Whether it's splitting last night's dinner bill, paying rent, or simply sending money back home, MePay does it seamlessly. MePay is deeply integrated in MeUI, allowing access through SMS, contacts, and even scanner. So now you can easily make money transfers to your friend's bank accounts. The MePay app also offers easy bill payments. Electricity, internet, phone bills, and more can be paid directly through the home screen. That too through multiple options. UPI, credit cards, debit cards, and net banking. In fact, MePay also sends smart reminders for bill payments. Your security is important to us. And that's why all the MePay data is stored only in India in highly secure systems. So whether it's grocery shopping at the supermarket, transferring money to a friend, online shopping, or even timely bill payments, MePay does it all. MePay, the easy way to pay. And in order to get uh, quick adoption for people to start trying out MePay and use that quite naturally in their regular digital lifestyles, we have some very exciting offers that we have lined up for all our uh, Xiaomi fans and Mi fans. Uh, we have over 100 Redmi Note 7 phones, as well as over 50 uh, Mi LED TVs available um, through a promotional offer to all our users. And they can start availing of this even as we speak for the next couple of weeks. That was MePay for you. Um, while I conclude my section, I now call on stage um, Anuj, Anuj Sharma, our Chief, Mar 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 Chief Marketing Officer, to talk us through the third announcement for the afternoon. Thank you, Anuj. Thank you, Murri. Again, a uh, very warm welcome and a good afternoon to everyone, our uh, strategic partners, our media colleagues, and of course, all the me fans watching us live through various platforms. Uh, like Murli mentioned, I'm Anuj, and I lead marketing here at Xiaomi India. Uh, now for the third <laughs> announcement, uh, now this is a critical announcement for us, and uh, something that is very deeply rooted into our philosophy. Our philosophy for innovation for everyone. Uh, we at Xiaomi believe that technology is an enabler for society. It activates a lot more opportunities, uh, bringing new livelihoods to people, and hence, it should not be limited to a smaller section. Uh, and we want to take this to more and more people uh, in India as well as all over the world. In fact, uh, this is quite apparent in the overall smartphone uh, strategy that you would have seen from Xiaomi since uh, the first phone that we launched around 2014, July. Uh, what started off is a mid-range miracle. And from there, uh, we've expanded our portfolio to cover not only the flagship, bringing in the latest technology and all new uh, features to the market, but we've learned from this and brought in a complete change in terms of how 
mainstream users could use their devices and what could they expect from a phone like that. Uh, now that, of course, got us onto a very good momentum. But then two years ago, we decided to take one step forward. Uh, we launched the Redmi A series. Now, we've had about three launches here, uh, Redmi 4A, 5A, and 6A. They have been tremendous successes. Uh, bringing in the whole Xiaomi philosophy into a sub hundred dollar price band for the first time ever. Uh, this obviously has been accepted very really well. In fact, in a lot of cases, it has far exceeded uh, what we thought the Redmi A series could do. In fact, beginning of last year, the Redmi 5A was the best selling Android device in the entire world. Not just in India, but the entire world. Of course, in India, both uh, 4A, 5A, as well as the recently launched 6A has seen tremendous acceptance. Uh, we've seen a lot of success here. And uh, you know, a lot of uh, thing that comes down to the success is how it's been accepted by our fans, by our users. Uh, some testimonial, for example, Saurav here. Saurav is a Mi fan. He's been a Mi fan for a long time. But he bought the Redmi 5A for his father. His father was a feature phone user for the longest time, and it's only last year when he switched to the smartphone for the first time. I know in our, uh, in the room here, it's very hard for us to understand you know, why somebody would stay on a feature phone for this long, but that is the situation for majority of India. Uh, when his father started using the 5A, it completely changed how he connected with his family. What he could do, uh, all the new opportunities that opened up, and of course, as he writes, it's impossible for his father to move back to a feature phone again. Uh, and these are changing lives. Uh, not only that, uh, when we were looking at this whole new segment, we've also transformed how our business model works. In fact, uh, as of last year, in October, October 29th, uh, we started a whole new business channel. Uh, we opened up Me Stores uh, on 29th of October. At the same time, we opened more than 500 stores uh, in smaller towns and rural areas in our push to get all these uh, amazing devices to more and more fans, more and more consumers. Uh, this, of course, did create a, a world record at that time that we are really proud of because not only were we getting closer to our consumers, but also uh, uh, you know, generating a lot more employment coming in. And not just from an exclusive stores perspective, uh, we've also focused a lot on after sales. Now this is again a critical element where people who are buying their first smartphones are extremely wary of. Uh, very proud to share that Xiaomi today ranks number one in after sales service across various parameters. And this has been the case for quite some time and of course something that we are extremely proud of. Uh, we now have more than a thousand service centers in India and what's really interesting is out of these 1,000 plus service centers, about 650 are in smaller towns. So tier two to tier five cities, we have been expanding. We are going closer and closer to where our end consumers are so that if they do have a problem, which is rare for Xiaomi, but if they do have a problem, they always have an after sales uh, center nearby. Uh, and this is important because again, we are trying to move people who've been traditionally on feature phones uh, onto the smartphone uh, era. Uh, if I look at the overall mobile landscape in India, and this is something that is somewhat unique to India, where most of the users still continue to purchase feature phones. In fact, in 2018, 56% of all phones sold in India were still feature phones. Now, this does not happen in most countries. Most countries have moved on to the smartphone side, but in India, this is a problem. And this is something that when we developed the Redmi A series, we wanted to push that further. Uh, in fact, if I look at under $100, uh, almost 80% of the phones selling are all feature phones, right? And this is, of course, one part is availability, and that we are trying to solve through Mi stores. But the second part is clearly the cost element coming in. Uh, with the Redmi A series, which actually is closer to $100, uh, we did significantly change this segment. 
In fact, of the 22% smartphones, almost half are from the Redmi A series. And this is, again, uh, mind you, this is on the higher side of the segment. There are smartphones that have been cheaper. Uh, just the fact that they were missing out on certain critical experiences that consumers wanted when they moved from a feature phone to a smartphone. Uh, what are those? What they want is a reliable device. They want a quality device because they're paying a lot more than what they would pay for a feature phone. Uh, the main reason why they were moving from a feature phone to a smartphone continues to be the fact that the entertainment consumption has skyrocketed in India. And the third part, and this is something that uh, is pretty interesting, even though they're moving from a feature phone, which is a very limited device, it does not do too many things, uh, they still want a smoother experience, even from a smartphone which does not cost them too much. Of course, uh, you know, all our tech colleagues here would understand that as you uh, go down the price points, the capability of the device has traditionally been severely limited. So suddenly when you move from a feature phone to a $100 smartphone, till the Redmi A series came about, uh, you would not really get a good experience because it's just hard to do. Uh, it's a combination of hardware and software all coming together uh, to give you the right experience. We today want to push this uh, to the next step uh, from the Redmi A series. And for that, we've partnered in with someone who shares the same vision as us, uh, and that is Google. Now, along with Google, uh, we are introducing a whole new series for the Indian market today, the Redmi Go. Now, Redmi Go, thank you. Uh, Redmi Go opens up a whole new world for you. Essentially, if I switch to Hindi, Redmi Go dikhata hai aapko, aapki nai dunya. And this effectively for a feature phone user changes how they operate, changes how they communicate, changes how they connect with people. And we have focused on the three elements that were really important to them. And I will go over each of these one by one. Number one is they expect a smooth experience. Uh, while uh, they are not paying too much in terms of the ASPs, uh, but for them, it's a significant step up. In this segment, every 500 rupee matters to the person who's spending that money. And for them, they want this smooth experience coming in. Uh, so with Redmi Go, what you get is a highly reliable, highly tested Qualcomm Snapdragon 425. Now this is a revolutionary processor. It changed how sub-$100 phones could be with the Redmi A series. Uh, and now we are bringing it to the Redmi Go series, giving you that uh, reliable performance coming in. But this is the hardware part of it. Uh, this combined with the Go edition of Android from Google again changes things in terms of how the, the phone works. Uh, the Go edition gives you a lot more storage inside the phone. It, it's a lighter operating system. Uh, it has optimized apps. And because of this optimization, the overall performance runs a lot smoother. And I'll talk about each of these elements. For example, from a storage perspective, uh, the Go edition typically uses half the internal storage of the, the, the regular Android. So this specialized Android fork gives you additional storage. Not just storage, but it's also a lot more efficient when it comes to RAM management. And hence, you don't really struggle with devices uh, where you're trying to do too much. And the third part, of course, is optimized essential apps. Now, Google has got uh, specific apps for Android Go, uh, retaining most of the functionality, but delivering them in a smoother uh, way for devices that do not have that much processing power. So you've got Maps Go, you've got email, uh, you've got Chrome and the web browsing, of course, search, and even Google Assistant coming on to the segment, uh, which if, again uh, is extremely important and we'll, we'll go over that in terms of why Google Assistant comes in. But uh, what I'm really interested in is of course um, YouTube Go. And YouTube, considering the fact that the overall uh, entertainment consumption is going up, uh, is an excellent app that they've put together for this. Uh, so YouTube Go is customized for uh, Android Go, but of course you can try it out on other devices as well. 
Uh, it is focused on the Indian market. It is also looking at how you use this data. Uh, it is meant for downloading videos. And of course, in rural areas where you might not have the network connectivity, uh, it also enables offline peer-to-peer -peer sharing of the video that you might have downloaded. Uh, so it, it changes how you consume this video data and how you share it with your peers. Uh, and this, of course, is on uh, Redmi Go. Uh, and all of these apps have been optimized in terms of the system size. Most of these essential apps, when you compare with traditional Android apps that you see, are 50% or in some cases even smaller than that. Now this obviously lends itself to getting you a lot more space inside your device and frees it up for you to have more apps or other data that you want. Uh, and not just the Google Essential apps, but a lot of other developers have also uh, worked on optimizing their apps. So you've got the regular social apps. Uh, you've got Facebook, you've got TikTok, uh, you've got Twitter, uh, Messenger coming in, uh, other essential apps like, for example, the cab apps, uh, so you've got Uber and Ola, both have a lighter version made for Android Go devices. And you've got a Mint browser, which is a much lighter browser that you will again see in the Redmi Go. Uh, overall, all of these apps are giving you that uh, access to uh, these uh, functionalities without really stressing the system too much. And the net result being it's a lot smoother. Uh, going back into the hardware part, uh, the Redmi Go comes with a dedicated expandable storage slot as well. Uh, and this, of course, is extremely important for a device like this. Uh, you can go up to 128 GB, uh, so you get a lot of space outside, which effectively means that on this device you could, if you have a 128 GB card, for example, you can have almost about 42,000 photographs stored externally. Uh, but of course, uh, it's, it's a whole lot of other apps that also can be moved. For example, some of the apps you can directly install in the external storage so that your internal storage stays clean. Uh, YouTube Go, for example, lets you store these videos directly on the external storage, again, leaving your internal storage free for any other usage. Uh, another optimization is the support for 20 plus regional languages in India. Uh, because we are trying to go deeper into the country, getting more and more people to move from feature phones to smart, uh, it becomes extremely important to have these regional languages, not just for you to type on or consume that data, but even when you search. So Google Assistant on the Redmi Go supports even Hindi. Of course, we've known it's been in English, uh, so you can talk to it in Hindi or even English. Right, so you can mix in words, and it responds. Uh, for example, if you want only in Hindi, uh, you can always ask, Aaj Delhi mein mausum kaisa hai? And it'll give you the response in Hindi again. Uh, you can even change it to, Aaj Delhi mein weather kaisa hai? And it automatically recognizes what you're trying to say and responds automatically. Uh, we've known that voice is the most natural way of communication for us. Uh, even compared to when it comes to typing, of course, uh, with Google Assistant coming in local languages like Hindi, uh, this again opens up a whole new segment where consumers who are not very comfortable typing can still search and get things done. So that's uh, the first part. You see a really good performance and all these things that have been optimized for a completely new segment. But this segment cares about entertainment. Uh, and they really consume entertainment quite a bit when given that option. When they move from feature phone to smartphone, that's the first thing that they're looking forward to. And why is that? Uh, primarily because in the last two to three years, uh, the data affordability in the country has changed significantly. In fact, today, India has the lowest cost for mobile internet data anywhere in the world. And this, of course, opens up a whole new uh, segment uh, and what you can do with it. Uh, the data consumption obviously is going up, and most of this data, unsurprisingly, is going in for video consumption. Almost 70 to 80% of it is on video. 
Of course, uh, some of you who might be on YouTube would already be seeing those stats, but uh, just putting it here again. So you've got cost-effective data coming in and all of this data moving into video services. So when we were looking at the Redmi Go, we had to get the display bang on. We had to get the display right to give that uh, overall experience uh, to the Redmi Go consumers. So on the Redmi Go, we have used a five inch high definition display. It's bright, it's vibrant, and of course, the most important part, it's absolutely clear. Uh, along with this, what you get, of course, is video playback uh, when you can. You've got HD video playing, and overall, it enhances the overall experience of the primary usage that we saw. 70% of the people using it for data consumption and video consumption, uh, and this you get uh, HD display. I'll not let Runvi distract you more. Uh, moving on. Uh, but when we're looking at display, we've also got some more nifty features. So on the Redmi Go, you've got night light. Now, at night, uh, when, you know, just before sleeping, if you're still reading something on your phone, uh, you can actually switch this on or have it switch on automatically on a schedule, but it cuts out the blue light, uh, hence makes it easier to read, less strain on your eyes, and some studies have shown that it helps you sleep better. Uh, Taking it to the next level, uh, Redmi Go also supports ambient display. Now, with ambient display, you get to see your key alerts on the display without really waking up the phone. And from there, you can choose how to react to this. So you can choose whether that notification is important enough for you to unlock the device and start seeing it, or you can choose to ignore it right then and there and uh, move on. So it helps you overall uh, use the device a lot better. And all of this is combined with an excellent 3000 mAh battery. Now this has enough power to give you 10 days on standby, or almost 30 hours of voice call calling, to almost 30 hours of uh, music playback. Uh, so this is uh, probably the largest uh, battery in the segment that you get with a device of this performance. Uh, along with the battery, another thing that we are again redefining is the cameras. Uh, the Redmi Go comes with an 8 megapixel rear camera. And this camera, uh, or the camera software, has a lot of features, something that, again, you do not expect from this segment. For example, before taking a picture, you have seven real-time filters. So you actually can, you know, deep dive into your artistic side before you even take a picture here. Uh, and you have different effects coming in. Uh, not just that, but you also have 11 manual scenes that you can select. So again, photography, uh, imagine photography for a person who's getting into the smartphone photography for the first time. He's got this beautiful five inch HD display, and then he gets a camera to match that, uh, giving them that really good experience overall. So you've got 11 scenes that you can choose from. And of course, uh, let's look at what the results would be. A picture like this. Now, this was taken by the Redmi Go. Uh, again, you do not expect pictures like this from a device uh, below $100. But uh, the color reproduction or the details are bang on. Uh, here's another one that was taken by our team. Uh, this is next to the Kabini River. Uh, again, what you can see is the clarity, uh, the, the details, and the colors have all been kept uh, well intact. Uh, of course, Vataj, nothing to say about this. It always looks good. Uh, and some more images. Now, these, all these camera images have been shot on the Redmi Go, uh, and mostly by our team. Uh, like, for example, this one is pretty close to our office. Uh, but what we wanted to highlight is what this camera is capable of doing. Now, imagine you are a first-time smartphone user, and you start seeing results like that, chances are you are not going to go back to a future phone. You will be extremely happy with what you get. Uh, now, once you've taken these photographs, and of course, we expect most of these people to take a lot of photographs with this incredible camera, you also get unlimited storage on Google Photos. Now, it is an Android Go device, and it gets activated. So when you start Google Photos, you get this option whether you want to back up. And in high quality image uh, resolution, 
you have unlimited storage. So essentially, you don't really have to worry about A, losing your photographs or your internal storage uh, as this is getting all backed up. Uh, another segment first is that the Redmi Go supports full high definition recording. Uh, so 1080p recording on the Redmi Go camera again gives you incredible results. Uh, and not just the back camera, but we've also focused on the front camera. Now this is a five megapixel camera and it comes with AI Beautify. Uh, you've seen that Xiaomi algorithm coming in where it detects the skin tones, uh, enhances the overall image, making uh, whoever's taking the selfie look better, hopefully. Uh, but one more thing about the front camera that's very interesting is we are also adding auto HDR. So you see Pallav here, and as it changes from a, a dark background to a brightly lit, the HDR kicks in. Uh, you can see that on top, uh, keeping the entire details intact. Um, again, uh, something that is new for the segment. And of course, if it can capture HD video, it can support HD video calling as well. Uh, so you get HD video calling on the Redmi Go, along with all the other great things. So that's on the entertainment plus what all it offers. Uh, the last part, and this is something that is extremely important, it is one of the core pillars of Xiaomi, is quality. And on a quality side, Redmi Go goes through a whole lot of tests. For example, the SIM card tray is ejected and reinserted almost 2,000 times. Or the headphone jack is test tested for 5,000 times. Or for example, our country is so diverse that we check for temperatures from minus 10 to 55 degrees to ensure that whichever part of India you are in, the phone will work perfectly. In fact, uh, these tests are not very different from what we do for our flagship devices. We are not compromising on quality in any manner. Uh, our quality continues to be the core focus. Uh, even Manu mentioned, you know, all our facilities have a really uh, micro level focus on how we measure quality. And with Redmi Go, this is not an exception. We continue to uphold our standards. Uh, so along with this quality, of course, you get the durable build. Now, uh, Redmi Go has a brushed metallic finish and it comes in two incredible colors. So you've got the blue, and I, I really love this one. You have to see it in person. Uh, and of course, the classic black, uh, that is somehow the favorite for most people. Uh, but when you talk about quality, there's one part of quality that people miss out on, and that is call quality. Uh, now, Let Me Go again becomes one of the first in its segment to actually have a dual mic noise reduction system. So you've got two mics, one that captures the user voice, and the second one that looks at the environmental noises and cancels that out so that your voice is crystal clear on the other side when you're talking. Uh, this, of course, is extremely important for this segment again, and uh, the Redmi Go becomes the first uh, phone in its class to have dual mic su uh, support there. Uh, another one that we've been focusing on is uh, uh, the overall surface temperature. So Redmi Go comes with dual pyrolytic graphite sheets. It reduces the overall surface temperature by about two degrees centigrade. Important because we know summers are just coming, and for that, uh, this really helps. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about summers, one more thing that we will expect is uh, constant outages and voltage fluctuations in a large part of the country. And for that, again, something that's India-specific that we've built grounds up for India is the power adapter. Now, the power adapter that comes with Redmi Go can handle spikes up to 380 volts. In most cases, we do see spikes. Uh, in most cases, uh, in competition devices, either the power adapter will give up, or worst case scenario, your phone will too. But on Redmi Go, we have an uh, adapter with inbuilt surge protection, again, enhancing the overall quality and the usability of this device uh, to last longer. So to sum it up, you get a smooth experience. You get Qualcomm's Snapdragon 425. You get the Android Go edition. You get 20 plus languages. Uh, you get Google Assistant, which you can talk to in Hindi as well as in English. Uh, and of course, moving on to the entertainment part of it, you get a high definition display, a five inch high definition display. You get 3000 mAh full day battery. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you get eight megapixel camera in the back, five in the front, okay. capable of uh, full HD recording, as well as you saw all those lovely filters coming in. Uh, with Google Photos, you get unlimited uh, photo backup. And uh, this is a dual SIM, so it, it takes in two uh, nano SIMs, plus has a separate uh, dedicated micro SD card slot for expanding that storage. And of course, with Android Go, you saw you can move certain apps to the external storage if you need to. And then, uh, from a quality perspective, when these people are moving on to the first smartphone, uh, our objective is that they should not be disappointed in terms of quality as well. So you get incredible build quality, uh, you get surge protection in the charger, you get uh, dual pyrolytic graphite sheets, as well as clearer call quality with a dual mic uh, noise reduction system. So that's uh, the Redmi Go. Moving on to the price of it. And before I go into the price, I wanted to compare it with two other devices that do have Android Go on them. Uh, so you've got uh, the Samsung J2 Core and the Nokia One uh, at about 6,000 and 5,000 each. None of them actually offer a HD display. Right? So they are all non-HD displays. Uh, not only does the Redmi Go have a HD display, it has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 425, which is an extremely powerful tested uh, processor. Uh, the Redmi Go also has a dedicated SD card slot, and again, first in class, uh, dual mic noise reduction system, which the others do not offer. Uh, it has the best cameras amongst all the Go devices, uh, both in the front and the back, and of course, a much, much larger battery, which again, we know is extremely important for the consumers. Uh, like I said, these devices are 6,000 and 5,000 each, uh, you will be able to get the Redmi Go starting at... <laughs> so the Redmi Go, the data is your new world, will start at uh, 4,499 rupees, and this is for the 1 GB plus 8 GB version. Uh, the first sale of this device is on 22nd March, that is this Friday at 12 noon. Uh, it will be available on me.com, me Homes, as well as Flipkart. So you can go there on uh, 22nd March at noon to get uh, Apka, uh, Apna smartphone. And uh, along with this, what you also get is an offer from Reliance Geo. Uh, so you get up to 2,200 rupees as cashback and 100 GB of data additionally free. So, Redmi Go, aapki nai dunya, 4,499. You get a five inch HD display, uh, 720p high resolution display. Uh, you get the incredible Qualcomm Snapdragon 425, uh, eight megapixels camera at the back, and five in the front. 3,000 mAh full day battery, and of course, uh, the Android Go edition of Oreo. So that's on the Redmi Go. So we've had three key announcements today, and uh, I would like to call upon Manu and Murli back on stage for a quick photo op.